Lynn here with my husband, Martin. And I've been doing Agoscu for almost 20 years, um, personally and professionally. So I got introduced to Agoscu 20 years ago as a personal trainer. Um, and I had neck pain at the time from a lot of years of bad posture due to overstudying in college and high school. Prior to that, I was a competitive gymnast for 16 years. So I was really strong and active and athletic. Then I became more sedentary and my posture just really took a hit. And I ended up with pretty bad neck pain. Um, and so I started doing Agoscu exercises and have been pain-free and haven't had any neck pain in 20 years. Um, I'm fully functional. I can work out and do what I want with my family and my kids. I don't have any limitations other than my mind. At 43, I'm thinking, hmm, I can ski. I like to, but do I really want to brave the ice and the snow? <laughs> I do sometimes and it's fun, but yeah, as I get older, I'm just like, oh, I'm not sure I want to go up against the ice anymore. <laughs> um, but now I have two kids and we uh, teach them exercises and help them stay healthy and well too. And I'm so grateful to be here with you guys today and share this amazing method with you all. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so my name is Zach Veers. I'm from, well, I'm the owner of the Seattle Clinic here. I've been in Seattle for six years now. Um, before that, I was working with uh, Martin and Kelly um, in Portland as a therapist. So um, originally from Utah, I got my uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in exercise sciences. Um, I was also a personal trainer when I was in school and that's how I learned about this as well, actually through a, a professor of mine who he had used this method to overcome his chronic back issues and was a big fan. So I learned about it from him and it just right off the bat really um, made sense to me. I like the philosophy of this, how we can heal naturally through exercises and movement um, and at first I thought it was just something I could use for my personal training clients um, but you know being in my early 20s and thinking I was invincible I you know this was something for old people right it doesn't apply to me <laughs> well I ended up having a lot of uh, back and shoulder issues myself uh, in grad school playing a lot of racquetball and um so I thought, well, maybe I should give this Egoscu stuff a shot. And sure enough, I, I had my posture evaluated and saw how crooked I was. And it just really made sense why I was in pain. And it wasn't the racquetball's fault. It was my body. I was crooked to begin with. So um, it really helped me get, a, get over my pain and keep playing racquetball. And so I decided to get certified and found a job in Portland. And here I am. So... <laughs> Yeah, um, let's see. Hi from New York. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Marie. Um, all right, so we are recording this, by the way, and I'll be sending it to everybody here, but also people who weren't able to join us. Um, and let me pull up my slides. And then, oops, share my screen so you can see it. There we go. So the Egoscu method, that's one of the first questions we usually get is how do you pronounce it? It's Egoscu. Uh, it comes from the founder's name, Pete Egoscu. Um, won't go into a ton of detail in, about that. If you'd like to learn more, you can read any of his books. But basically, he was a Marine from Vietnam, um, came back home and with injuries that left him in chronic pain and no one could really help him with. Um, and so he basically through self-discovery and study, figured out how, well, what was really obvious was our bodies are designed to be, um, you know, our posture is designed to be symmetrical, uh, balanced, right and left side functioning the same, same muscles, same joints on both sides of our bodies. And so that's kind of how this method was born, was he helped himself and then he started helping other people. And now we have um, over 30 clinics um, worldwide, most in the U.S., a couple in Canada, a couple in, um, or sorry, a couple in Mexico, none in Canada yet, and a couple in Japan. So 
And it looks like we have a couple of Canadians on the on the call here. So welcome from our friends up north. A few at least. Awesome. So um, we're all here. Um, I'm assuming because interested in sciatica. <laughs> but if if you don't have sciatica or you don't never had it, good for you. <laughs> it's not fun. But um, I think you'll still find this useful. We'll. Um, regardless of where your symptoms are, the Egoski method um, can most likely help you. But today our focus is on sciatica. And um, so I just wanted to kind of put this out there. First of all, what sciatica is, is we'll talk about it on the next slide, but basically it's really a cluster of symptoms um, that can be caused by various things. So list, I listed a few here. These are the most common causes, uh, arthritis in the spine, degenerative disc disease or herniated discs, bone spurs, stenosis, also piriformis syndrome. So these are all things that can uh, interfere with or compress uh, or irritate your sciatic nerve, which starts in your back and runs down your legs. So Take a quick moment and raise your hand um, on your reactions if you experience any of these symptoms currently. Just wave your hand, put your hand up a little bit there, or thumbs up. Yep. I've had it before, a couple of years ago, actually. Um, I had a herniated disc, and yeah, it's not fun. So it looks like most of you can, can uh, agree. Um, so what is it exactly? Um, so as I mentioned, it's, it's a nerve, the sciatic nerve. Um, you can see here, uh, can you all see my cursor, by the way? Kelly, can you see my cursor? Yep, I can. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the, your lower back. Uh, the nerve has several roots that come out from your spine and then kind of combine into this. I think it's actually the, the biggest, like thickest uh, nerve in our bodies um, down through the back side of your pelvis through this little notch here and then down the back of your legs. You can see how it, it affects the hamstring muscles and calf muscles and your shin all the way into your feet. Um, so you can experience pain anywhere along there. Some people feel it just in their back. Some people feel it kind of right in the buttocks. Uh, some people feel it down the leg or and anywhere in between. I've had people where all they feel is like a numbness in their foot and they don't have any pain in their back or their leg. And so you can experience a lot of different symptoms with this, but basically it, what it comes down to is somewhere along the length of that nerve is getting, um, getting pinched or uh, compressed and that's what's that's what you feel um, so there's um, I did want to point out there's a couple different causes as we mentioned um, here and so this is where uh, it's not really a one-size-fit-all treatment or um, or even a program to to fix it so depending on what's actually causing your sciatica um, you know, is it coming from your, your back or is it coming from um, getting pinched here in the piriformis? So that's more like the piriformis syndrome. Maybe some of you have been diagnosed with that. Um, and that's going to dictate which exercises we use. But um, this uh, on the right, we've got the sciatica. Um, this is a close up of the kind of a cross sectional area of. Uh, one of your discs and vertebrae. So you can see how the disc protruding there or herniating, compressing the nerve as it goes out of the spine. And the stenosis, that's typically when the, um, the area where the nerves run, the bones themselves actually kind of develop spurs or um, like bone growth that compresses or shrinks that area as well. So, um, any questions so far about what we've gone over here? Try not to make it too boring, but just want to make sure we're all on the same page about what this is. So this kind of brings me to my next point about um, how we view sciatica is, or how we treat this also. Um, so this is kind of at the micro level, and this is what's actually, you know, causing the pain. But 
when we take a step back and say, okay, well, why is it there? <laughs> That's the real important question. Because yes, you may have imaging done. Maybe you did an MRI or an X-rays or um, been diagnosed with, um, you know, lumbar herniations or stenosis or bone spurs or anything else like that. Um, and we want, if we want to fix that, we have to first ask, well, why is it there? And a lot of people will just blame it on their age, um, but you know, that's that's a whole other topic. But basically, um, degenerative changes in your spine are pretty common, even from age of like thirty and on onwards. So um, it gets more prevalent with age. But lots of people have these things in their back and never even notice it because it doesn't cause them pain. So um, aging of in and of itself isn't isn't a guaranteed you know, cause of your pain. But um, at Egoski, we look at um, your posture and how your body's alignment in, impacts this. So you can imagine if these, this nerve running through, you know, this relatively small space between each of your vertebrae and then through the muscles here, that if your body's not in the position it's supposed to be in, then that can cause um, just the little shifts in your alignment can cause extra stress on the nerves getting pinched or inflamed. And so, um, you know, with posture, um, it makes sense. I think when, when uh, you think of it from just a real basic sense, like obviously our bodies, just like this house, are not going to be as structurally sound and not gonna be as stable and strong or long lasting um, when they're not in good alignment. And when this house obviously is just, uh, moments away from falling over and some of you may feel that way too <laughs> with your bodies but you can see how changes down at the bottom affect all the way up to the top and our bodies are the same way so you may have some changes in your back or in your pelvis but we have to look at what's happening above it what's happening below it because all those things will impact um, you know your body's ability to function normally so when we treat sciatica, it's a very customized approach where just like every symptom, we have to look at the position of your body, how everything is functioning. And um, that's really what we want to treat if we want a long lasting result. So um, the posture, when we're talking about posture, by the way, a lot of people just assume we're, we mean, oh, that just means standing up straight, pulling back your shoulders, you know, chin tucked, whatever. Um, and it's really more, <laughs> more um, detailed than that, I guess. It's, uh, it's really your posture is a function of or a byproduct of how all your muscles and joints are working together. Um, so when our posture is not in good alignment or we have poor posture, it puts extra stress on, it can put stress anywhere in today's topic, you know, specifically the back or the, or the uh, piriformis uh, area. Mm -hmm. And so good posture is really about a state of balance, meaning the right and left sides are doing the same thing. We've got a right leg and a left leg that should both support 50% of the weight, right? Um, we've got two hip joints, pelvis, that should be level, spine resting on top of that, shoulders above that. So all those things need to work together properly, not just when we're standing, but moving, walking, sitting, jumping, even lying down, you know, we all, we have a posture, you know, in all those scenarios too. So um, that's kind of when we just want to define what we mean by posture. So our bodies are really designed to move. And that's where a lot of our problems um, come from is the lack of movement or moving not enough or not uh, in enough variety. Um, we can all probably think back to when we were younger and remember playing a lot or being outside a lot more not being confined to desks or cars or our couch, you know, but um, unfortunately, as we get older, especially with the um, modern technologies, it just becomes easier and easier to not move your body. It's, you don't really have to move unless you really want to. And even when we are moving for exercise, you know, we, you might be doing something for an hour a day if you're, if you're active. But then what are you doing the other um, 23 hours, you know, minus sleeping, you know, there's still a lot of waking hours where you're just not moving your body. And so our muscles stop working the way they should from underuse. 
maybe some muscles get overly tight or overly used while others kind of wither away. And so we develop these imbalances in our body alignment um, that causes us pain. So ultimately, you know, our job at Egoscu is to get people moving better again. Um, and we do that through simple exercises and movements, but the ultimate goal is to get everyone out of pain so that you can um, do all the activities that you want to do again. So uh, eliminating pain, as I kind of alluded to already, like we want to go after the cause. And so these treatments like drugs, surgeries, um, they may give you temporary relief um, and they may, especially the surgeries, there are surgeries where they can you know, remove part of that disc that was pushing on the nerve or even fuse your spine so it doesn't move and doesn't irritate the nerves anymore. Um, but, you know, then you're just changing uh, uh, the effect or the, um, the consequence of the, the real underlying problem, which was the imbalanced posture and lack of movement. So eventually the pain is going to come back or um, move somewhere else and a disc above or below it will um, will tend to herniate as well after those surgeries. So um, we just want to make sure that we're actually treating the cause and not the symptoms, um, you know, resting and, or giving up, just giving up the things you like to do is also an option. But once again, that's not really fixing it. It's just avoiding it. <laughs> and uh, as many of you probably experienced when you have this pain, it's really limiting, right? You can't do a lot of things, especially with sciatica, even stuff like sitting down is, is challenging. So um, to, you can just avoid sitting down or you can, <laughs> you can fix the problem, right? I think we all know what we want to do there. Um, <clears throat> so what we want to do is fix the posture and it's a process. And so at Egoscue, what we do is um, it's not a, not usually a quick fix, although people will experience relief most of the time even right away on their first session or when they first start doing their exercises. But we kind of break up the, the process into three categories here. Um, I know some of you on the call here are brand new to Egoscu. Some of you have been doing this for years. Um, some of you have worked with the book, some have worked with the practitioner, you know, so we're all in different stages, but um, I think this helps kind of illustrate um, how it works. And, this first phase restore is, um, you know, that's where if, when you're very first starting off, you've never done the exercises before and you start working on your posture, um, you know, you've got a lot of pain. That's usually what drives people to, to do this. Um, and so the reason you have the pain is your posture. And so that's what we're focusing on, restoring your body's alignment and your ability to move and have confidence in your body again, uh, being out of pain. So you know, at some point then the, as your posture improves, your symptoms decrease, you start to feel better, you start to be able to do more things without pain. So then we start strengthening the second phase. That's where um, you might find yourself like, oh, I kind of want to try doing yoga again, or maybe start running again after who knows how many years of not doing it because of uh, pain or various other reasons. And so we want to make sure your body's in good alignment still that you can be out of pain, not just at rest, but when you're active. Um, so that when you're putting more stress on your body, you don't just get flared up again and right back to where you started. So it's an important step of, you know, continuing to work on your posture, but strengthening it, you know, maybe increasing your activity levels and, and making sure you're working out in a way that's benefiting your posture and not hurting it. And then this final phase is kind of where everyone wants to be. You can see the arrow continues on past this. So this is where hopefully for the rest of your life, you're thriving, meaning you no longer have pain. You can do all the things you want to do. And um, it's still, you're, but you're still working on your posture. That's the thing to remember is it's, um, it's not something you can just fix and then forget about just like any other healthy habit, you know, your diet, your exercising, sleep habits, you know, stress, stress, um, stress relief, that stuff you have to work on your whole life and the posture is no different. So it is something that you'll have to maintain. It doesn't mean you're going to be spending, you know, an hour each day for the rest of your life to stay out of pain, but um, 
uh, you will have to do something if you want to keep the results that you gained in these first few phases. So, uh, Kelly, anything to add to that? Or if not, we'll talk about function ready here. Yeah, you touched on it a little bit earlier. So we'll just go into a little bit more detail. Um, and first of all, I just want to say I've never met anyone who actually looks like this. So I don't use this as a comparison between like, this is the perfect body and this is what we should look like. No, this is just like a blueprint that we use to help as an assessment tool for ourselves and with our clients when we're in clinic. Um, many of you have either had your posture photos taken before or have read one of Peter Goskew's books that have these pictures in them. And so um, in the book and then also in clinic with us, we teach you how to basically put on your posture goggles and become your own posture expert and begin to start to diagnose and then self-treat, right, through exercise. So this is kind of your first step if you're new today for the first time, or maybe it's a continuation if you've been here before um, and are an existing client. So maybe you can share this with some other people that you know and help them with your tools you already know to diagnose themselves on, hey, well, where's, where's your posture at today? So um, when we look at posture, we wanna look at a total body snapshot and from the front view, the back view, the right side and the left side, this gives us so many good clues into, well, what did we do in a lifetime? How has our body added up till now? Everything that we've done up until now, how has our posture been created? How do we stand? How do we sit? How do we move, right? So we want to look at, well, where does the head sit in relationship to the spine between the shoulders? Are the shoulders level and square and balanced? Um, do the arms fall equally to the sides of the body with the thumb and the side of the pointer finger pointing straight ahead? Um, does the upper body sit on top of the pelvic girdle? Is the pelvis balanced? Is it tipped forward? Is it elevated? Is it rotated? There's lots of things that we can see um, when we look at our postures in the mirror um, or have our posture photos taken and then analyze them. Um, and then Below the hips, do the knees point straight ahead? Do they point out? Do they point in? Do they hyperextend backwards? Are they kind of bent? Do I sit in like a bent position for part of the day? Um, and then the most you know, telling sign of whether you're out of posture or in posture, good posture, um, is look down at your feet. Um, do they point out? Do they point in? Does one foot out point out and one foot point in? Do your ankles cave in? Do they roll out? Um, so there's so many great ways to assess your posture and start to begin pulling your, your posture conscious out of that subconscious mode and begin to get clues of, well, why am I in pain and how is my posture related to my, um, physical limitations, right? And those are just such important key factors in your getting better and, um, you know, having success and results with your exercises. Um, Kelly, there was a, a question about what if one leg is a bit longer plus uh, scoliosis. So oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give my two cents and then maybe you can. Okay, answer. yeah, go ahead. Are you going to do it in the chat or you want to do it? I'll just yeah, I'll it to everybody. Yeah, so this yeah. is a common issue. So leg length discrepancy, so one leg longer than the other. Um, it's, uh, it's a thing. Uh, relatively rare, I would say, what, to have the bones actually different lengths, um, although I've seen it before. Um, but a lot of, a lot more common is what we call functional leg length discrepancy, meaning the bones on each of your legs are more or less the same length, but they function differently because your pelvis is out of alignment. So like if your hip elevates on one side, that's going to make one of your legs look like it's longer, right? Just because the hips are not Level. Yeah, the muscles are shorter and tighter on one side of the body. Yeah, exactly. Making it appear that the bones are a leg length difference. Um, but when you release those muscles and the pelvic girdle balances out, then the leg length corrects itself and then you can be fully functional. Um, but if it is a true leg length discrepancy, you have to have that verified uh, and like measured um, with your physician. So right. um, yeah. that's like a separate thing. Yeah. So if anybody has really specific one-on-one -on -one questions about that, I would um, invite you to email us or call us directly for sure. Yeah, but either way, we can 
you can still help, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, there's, you, there's still hope even if you do have like, That's right. emergencies, so. All right. Okay, and then this is our side posture. So this one's a little bit harder to assess on your own, but you can stand sideways in the mirror and you know you have to turn your head but you can look full body length to your side um a lot of us are really aware especially now that we're sitting a lot more for all of our zoom meetings and we've just been more sedentary during the pandemic right we've got this rounded shoulder forward head neck forward situation happening from you know working away virtually etc kids at home you know working on their homework and homeschooling as of last year i'm sure a lot of us have seen Friends and family's postures go downhill, right? So from the side view, you want to assess, is your head up over your shoulders where it should be, right in the middle, right? Is there a straight line between the ear, the middle of the shoulder girdle, the middle of the pelvic girdle, the middle of the knee, and then right in front of the ankle bone? Also, you want to see, is, is my elbow in line and my wrist in line with all of those four, four load-bearing joints? Um, if not, that just means we have some muscular compensations happening that are actually pulling the bones out of position. Remember, the muscles um, move the bones. So any posture deviation is a trained habit that you have created over time that pulls the bones out of position. And when they're out of position, they can't work optimally. You actually, there's really no such thing as like strong or weak because it's just positionally out of balance. And in that compromised position, you can't effectively use those muscles because they're not in the right position to be working properly. Okay. So many of you are already getting your posture goggles on and assessing, maybe even have a really clear idea of like, oh my gosh, I know my posture has been out for years. I've been trying to find a solution for this, right? Well, we're the posture people. So here's your spine curve. Now your curve and your lumbar curve and your cervical curve are the same. It's just the size of the bones are different, right? And what's important for this is if you, if your curve is there to absorb shock when you walk, that's what your joints are for. That's what your spine is for, is to absorb that shock to protect your brain, right? So if your curve is off in a number of degrees, then um, instead of having that nice flex and extend and shock absorber, they're stacked more in a straight line. And what happens is your discs, I sort of equate those to jelly donuts, right? Um, instead of just going with the flow, right? And flexing, extending like they should, they get stacked on top of each other and they get compressed. Now, a lot of times with sciatic people, it's either when they're sitting or they're standing, pain is the worst in either one of those positions. And it's due to the position of the curvature of the spine and whether it's pushing on the nerve laying down or pushing on the nerve standing up or sitting, right? And the compression when the curve is out of alignment actually takes those discs, those jelly donuts and like pushes the matter that's in there out to the sides um, due to the compressed position. So that presses on the nerves. So that's one really clear way you can know um, by looking in the mirror and seeing if you do have that nice S curve. Is it flat in the low back? Is it flat in the upper back, but then your head dips forward? Um, you know, any compromise in the S curve is going to be a muscular imbalance and it can be corrected over time. So. All right, Zach, you wanna take over this part or do you want me to do this part? <clears throat> yeah, so this is a chance for everyone to participate a little bit and um, practice you know, assessing someone's posture here. So um, this is a real client. I got some lines on there to help us see. So why don't you put in the chat or you can unmute yourself if you'd like and just shout out uh, anything that you notice that looks different on his posture based on what we just talked about. So if you need a quick refresher, you know, those eight low joints, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles vertically stacked from the front and the sides, uh, centered body. So what do we see? Yeah, the head's pushed forward. Mm -hmm. yep. That is really nice, really I mean. far. Really far. Yeah, forward, ears yeah. need to be over the shoulders, is that right? 
roughly? Yep, ears over the shoulders and, and on the line, right? So it's, he's really far ahead of the, of the line there. So we've got some uh, in the chat, uh, right hip here. Yep, does everybody see that? How it's a little hard to see, but right side of his pelvis is higher than his left. You can kind of follow the line of his shorts, but also just looking at kind of the crease in his waist here versus here is different. Uh, we, even, we could even take a guess at what he does for a living. Do you think he sits all day, stands all day, is active and moving, does construction? What do you think he does? Is his yeah. legs bowed? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Good catch there. Thank you. Means I don't know. I don't know what, I, I would think he like, maybe like, I think he sits a lot. Mm -hmm. I would guess that. Yeah. Those couple people in the chat. Great. Have any of you looked in the mirror already and see, see some resemblances to his, right? Yeah. And can we predict, well, where is he going to have pain? In that position, where would you expect him to have pain? Put that in the chat. Um, I would say in the upper back area, shoulders, neck, and hip, mm -hmm. legs, all over. Yeah, neck for sure. Mm -hmm. T1 zone for those people who know all about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I mean, he actually did have sciatica um, and you can, he's got a couple things going for him here, that elevated pelvis, you know, basically um, that kind of messes up the natural curvature of your spine, right? Because now the spine's not centered, it's, t it's elevated on one pelvis, making the spine kind of veer off to the, the left. Then also from the side view, um, he doesn't have that nice S curve anymore because everything's kind of ahead of the line. So the curves are exaggerated and um, yeah. So someone mentioned the leaning to the left, good. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's see what changed here. So this is him a couple months later. Oh, wow. Put on a shirt and his posture is different. So what, uh, what specifically changed? What do we notice now? His posture is definitely better. Yeah. What specifically? That midline so much uh, better. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's incredible, really. How many months was that? Um, I want to say like two, two or three months. I mean, I don't. Have the dates in yeah. front of me, but oh, yeah, mm -hmm. was yeah, in our uh, eight eight sessions, sixteen program. weeks is typical. Yep, yep yeah. remarkable symmetry. So, yep, he's more balanced or symmetrical, right and left. Um, shoulders are more level. Can't really see the hips because the shirt's covering it, but you can you can assume his hips are more level because we go back. Yep, to his yeah. legs are definitely like. Uh, an alignment with his shoulders and stuff too. Yeah, side view, his ears actually mm -hmm. touching the line versus here, it was barely touching yep. the back of his head. <laughs> so much oh better. And a really important point to remember when looking at the pre-posture versus the post-posture is if he were to get into any type of accident, slipping or falling, car accident, anything, um, you know, how would his body fare in one position versus the other, right? Um, would he have less injury, less damage um, in one position versus the other? I know I can attest personally to having a broken ankle in June. Um, and, you know, in six weeks, I was completely healed and fine and working out full speed again. Um, and that I attribute to my posture position and the strength that I had going into that injury, which was completely out of my control. Um, so, you know, if he was in a car accident and he had that rounded forward position, you know, whiplash would be a lot greater. So there's a lot of reasons to change your posture, um, for preventative measures rather than, you know, 911 measures, right? Long-term goals for posture and prevention. Yeah. Someone asked about how many weeks is typical, eight to 16, you know, um, but that's, these results, you know, to see the changes like this, you know, take some time to change, change your body like that significantly, but you will, 
most of the time feel and see some changes right away. Even just doing some exercises that we'll do today, you should feel a little bit of change in your body. And so now each time you do that every day, it's going to add up and your body's going to over time change more dramatically. But um, so it depends on how severe it was to begin with, of course, but I'd say most people feel results right away. And then it's just a matter of time on task, you know, doing yeah. it to me for it to, for it to show up like this dramatically. So, yeah, I always like to use the analogy of um, the concert pianist, right? The concert pianist who sits down and plays the song that they know by heart, it's because they've trained their body and they have the muscle memory. They don't need the sheet music anymore, right? So when they get to the, to the, um, to the concert, they just go. And so that's the equivalent of your posture right here, right now in the seats that you're in. And so the first day that you come to Agoscu, we take your photos and you know you get to see what song you've been playing all these years, everything that adds up to now, right? All the muscle memory that's there. And when you start doing the Agoscu exercises, it's like putting a new sheet of music in front of that piano. And you've got to learn how to train in that new muscle memory to change the posture. So it takes consistency, it does take time, um, but you can see and feel the changes right away. Your body wants to be optimal, it wants to be in a good position. That's why you have pain. Your body is trying to tell you with the only language that it has, AKA sensation, hey, you're out of balance, something's wrong, fix me. And if you ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, it just screams louder. It starts to move around the body. It starts to compound, right? But no matter whether you've had surgery one time, multiple times, or are contemplating surgery or never had surgery, right? You've just been in pain for 10 years. You have to intervene at some point in the pain process and start to realign the body. Um, if not, you'll just continue to go down that road of more and more pain, more and more compensations, and you know, adding one pain on top of the other. Um, and your life just gets more and more sedentary. Like I used to bike, I used to hike. Well, now I walk, now I swim. I used to golf, can't do that anymore, right? How many of you have taken away some of the things you love to do? Raise your hand or give me a thumbs up, right? Um, and the only way to get that back is by can, starting to retrain those muscles to do the right job and start straightening and strengthening and straightening and strengthening the body over time to get more and more active back towards the things that you love to do. Yeah, great points. Just want to share a couple other before and afters just to show kind of what's possible and this guy obviously pretty bent over <laughs> to begin with, and you can see the improvement that he made as well. Um, he had back pain um, also. And so um, here's a younger example. We had questions about scoliosis. So obviously she's young and it is easier to, I guess, change or uh, correct the body the younger you are, but it doesn't mean you can't change it when you're older. Um, but, uh, if we're talking about true, like scoliosis, you know, at some point your, your body stops growing. Right. And then, um, your spine is kind of, uh, it is what it is, but you can improve the muscles and getting more balance there. Um, so if, if you can catch it when you're young, if you have kids or grandkids that have been diagnosed with this, like definitely get them started, um, as soon as possible, because we can really make a big difference in their, their bodies. Um, when they're still young and growing and malleable. Yeah, well, you can prevent them from having sciatica when they get older, right? They can compensate for it for a certain amount of time. And as they get older and their compensations get stronger and stronger over time, then more pain creeps in. So giving them the tools early is helpful. Yeah, this is kind of an extreme example, but I like to share it just because it shows just what's possible and how even this lady who is really uh, bent over and stuck, um, I mean, that's her in the top standing standing up as straight as she could, right? So her back was so bent over um, as an adaptation to what she was doing. Like Kelly talked about, you know, you train your body for thousands and thousands of hours to do something, um, in her case, bending over or sitting down, then it's gonna adapt. And that's the position you kind of get stuck in. 
but it's not never truly stuck. I mean, it just takes time and the right stimulus with the exercises to, to release that tension and wake up new muscles and restore that balance. And you can see what happened to her in a relatively short period of time, actually. So this was pretty immediate change. I always say um, suffering is optional. And if you have muscles, there's hope. Everybody who has muscles, raise your hand, right? <laughs> I've got them, you've got them, everybody's got them, right? So, um, and the muscles tell the bones what to do and our brains tell the muscles what to do. So if we're consciously and consistently telling our muscles to create better posture habits through exercise and day-to-day -day living through movement, then our muscles have to change form and which in turn have to shift the bone position, right? The body doesn't have a choice other than to do what the brain tells it to do. So um, that's really, really hopeful for all of us um, going forward that, hey, we've got muscles, there's hope, we can do something. We can be powered, empowered with exercises as tools to help us live the lives that we wanna live. All right. Um, I lost the slide, Zach, but you do not need them up. I just turned them off. Yeah. So they okay, great. Yeah, All right. So now it's time to give this Agoski thing you've all heard about a whirl, right? Let's try it on. So Agoski was not a one size fits all approach. And I have absolutely no idea what every single person's symptom and like pain level is today. So I want you to take these exercises as an opportunity to learn about your body and understand it at a level that maybe you haven't, you know, understood it at yet. Okay. If you can, and you're comfortable, get down on the floor with me and try these exercises. If not, just watch, learn, maybe try them later. Um, or if you do try them and you come up against resistance in your body, please write that feedback down that your body gives you on a little piece of paper and then reach out to us because that is such helpful information to us as therapists on, well, what is your next step personally? Not your neighbors, not your friends, but you personally, okay? So um, these are really basic general exercises um, that help rebalance the body um, and can correct sciatic pain no matter where it's coming from, okay? So um, if you can, and if you want to tip your camera down so I can see you, great. I'm probably not going to be able to posture and exercise check everybody, but Zach's here to help. So if he sees anybody, you know, flailing all over, he'll be sure to uh, voice up. But I'm going to put my camera down yeah. here. Kelly, do we want to take him through a quick self-assessment first? Um, yeah, yeah. We were going to do kind of like a little posture assessment, right? Um, we're going to talk about um, how balanced we are in our pelvic girdle. One of the ways to assess your posture is to look at your pelvic girdle and see, okay, is my pelvis tipped forward, right? Do I have a big arch in my back and my pelvis rolls forward and my belly hangs out over my, my belt buckle or my waistband, right? Or does it tuck under and my butt's sort of just non-existent, right? And I kind of tuck into a C-curve position right? So is it an anterior tilt? Is it a posterior tilt? Okay, you can assess that position, right? And kind of make a note on your paper. Or does it just sort of feel neutral? Okay. And then from the front view, and I'm wearing black and gray pants here, so maybe not a lot of um, contrast there, but if you look in the mirror and you take your hands and you go to the top of your pelvic girdle and you squeeze in, is one hand feel higher than the other? or do they feel equal, right? You can go right to the top of the pelvic girdle and squeeze in and see, does one hand feel higher than the other? Right now, today, my right one's just a tiny bit higher. I can feel that, okay? And you might be able to see it, okay? And then when you look down, you can put your hands kind of on the front of your pelvic girdle, or you can stand up against a flat wall and put the whole back side of your body flush to the wall, the back of your heels, the back of your bum, and your shoulders. And feel into the wall. Is one butt cheek pressing in further into the wall than the other? If you look down, is your pelvis rotated? Does one foot want to stay in front of the other when you stand? Okay, that's a sign of rotation in the body. Okay, 
which rotates the spine, can pinch the nerve, etc. So these are just a quick assessment for the pelvic position that you have. Take little notes, write down what you observe. You may observe nothing, that's okay too. Um, you can assess, well, where's my pain level right now? Is it at a 10, 10 being the worst? Is it at a two? Write that down too, right? Is the intent, what's the intensity of my pain? Um, what's the duration? Um, those types of things, okay? Now I'm gonna give you three exercises to do and you can do those once a day. You can do them multiple times a day. Um, as long as you're doing them consistently, they should make a difference. Now, if they don't, that's okay too. That just means you need something more specifically tailored to you and you have other imbalances going on in the body that need to be addressed along with the ones that we're addressing today, okay? So let's get down on the floor. Did I miss anything there, Zach? Oh, you're good. Okay. Yeah. And if you can't get up and down off the floor, that's okay too. You can do these in bed or on a massage table or on a flat surface um, that's stable, okay? So let's head down onto the floor and you're gonna need either a yoga block or people who already do a goscue, a six inch pillow, right? A shoe box width, that's six inches or your little yoga block turned to the side, not the four inch side, but the six inch side, okay? You can grab a like a throw pillow off your couch and maybe fold it in half to make it a little more dense. That'll work too. Throw a pillow off your couch or a bed pillow, fold it in half, just so that you have a little bit of resistance, okay? For the exercises that we're gonna do. And then you're gonna lay down on your back and you're gonna put your arms at a 45 degree angle away from your body. Feet are hip width and parallel. You can use that pillow between your feet to set the stage, right? To make sure that you are completely straight, okay? And then you can keep your feet right where they're at. Put that pillow between your knees, hands out, palms up at a 45 degree angle. Relax your upper body. Take nice, big, deep breaths with your diaphragm, right? Rising up the belly full of air, letting it all out. And then you're gonna squeeze and release that pillow using your inner thigh muscles, okay? You're gonna squeeze and release, squeeze and release. Now, pay attention. Is the right side squeezing as hard as the left side? Is one getting more tired before the other? Is it equal? Now, if you can't get down on the floor, you can do these sitting as well, but just remember the spine is in a more compressed position. So you might be in more pain sitting than when you're laying on your back. When you're laying on your back, the S curve in your spine has a better chance of realigning itself. And we can get into the deep core posture muscles in the hips more balanced in this position, okay? More equally. So, how many people's inner thigh muscles are getting tired? <laughs> Maybe the legs are getting a little shaky, right? Just make sure that uh, when you're squeezing the pillow that you don't engage any muscles in your upper body. So your lower back, especially, or your abdomen should be nice and relaxed. Sometimes people no, tense up. No there. ab crunchies, yeah, no ab crunches. We're just using those inner thighs and hip muscles. You're gonna feel it in this lower section, right? And you wanna make sure you're not rounding your shoulders up off the floor or anything like that, okay? So we've got those. Now we're gonna move on to exercise number two. Now, I do like to keep that pillow between your feet for this one, just for good measure. I'm all about, hey, let's use our tools, right? To make sure that we're accurate. So feet are hip width and your pelvis is gonna stay hip width. Okay, now you're gonna cross that ankle over the knee and then you're gonna, making sure your pelvis still stays square, you're gonna push that knee away from you using your hip muscles, not your hand, okay? You're gonna push that knee away with your hip muscles and hold. And the leg that's still on the ground, you have to make sure that the shoulder, the hip, the knee and the ankle all stay in a nice line straight line here while you're pushing this one away, keeping your pelvis nice and square. Now, for people who have sciatic on one side versus the other, you're gonna be tighter on one side versus the other. Um, this is gonna help the people with piriformis syndrome 
feel a whole heck of a lot better. Um, it's really an exercise to help balance the pelvis. It's not a piriformis stretch. It is, but that's not what we use it for, okay? Um, Kelly, can you show that like a common compensation, like if you bail your hip out to the side? Yeah, yeah. So when I go to the other side, it's gonna be easier to, for me to show you that. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to cheat on doing this, not on purpose, it's just the way your body has been functioning, right? Is when you cross that leg over, you're gonna shoot this hip out and up towards the head and you'll crunch your midsection here. Don't allow that to happen, right? If you grab your pelvis on the ground here, this is basically base camp, it's square. Keep it square as you cross over, then push and hold. Now, don't push any harder that way than you can keep your pelvis square, okay? It's a check and balance system. This is a little bit more advanced, so um, take it with a grain of salt. If it's too complex, don't worry, because the next one is gonna be super easy, and it'll do double the work at once, so. And then when you've got your pelvis square and you're pushing and holding nice and easy, hands out, palms up. We usually hold that for a minute, by the way, on each side. Um, and then go ahead and put both feet down on the floor. You can kick that pillow out to the side. Then the third one you can do to help balance the pelvis and the spine. And this one is a really great one to help recreate that nice S curve that you may have lost in your spine over time. So you put the bottoms of your feet together and let your knees drop out to the side nice and slow. You're not going to actively push your feet towards the floor, or excuse me, your knees towards the floor. You're just going to let gravity take them. Now, if this is really tight for you, you may need to prop up your outer legs with pillows on each side, okay? To give yourself a little support, that's okay. And then you're gonna hold this for about one to two minutes. Take a nice big deep breaths. There's not a lot of tricks to this one. Just make sure that you keep the bottom of your feet together completely, okay? And don't be too far away from your bum and too close. You wanna be, oh, about six to eight inches away from your bottom, right? With your heels. But you should see, um, you know, if one is higher than the other, one's lower, that's a muscle imbalance. So that's a way we can learn about our body here, about, well, what, you know, why am I in pain in my sciatic nerve? Well, wow, the muscles in one side of my hip are so much tighter and my knee's higher in this frog position. Or when I cross that ankle over and push, oh my gosh, it was so tight, right? Well, that's a muscle imbalance that has to be corrected in order for the body to function optimally. So bring those legs together and then slowly but surely come up off the floor. And you might need to go to a seated position first if you were down there and are feeling a little lightheaded. And once you change your posture, you get more oxygen into your body and into your brain. So it could make you feel a little lightheaded, right? And then now stand up and reassess your pelvis. Is it still higher on one side? Ooh, my right side is actually lower. I can feel it lower now. Is it less tipped forward? Is it less tucked under, right? Stand up against the wall. Did, one, did it balance out? Is it less rotated forward than it was before? So who's, uh, you can unmute yourself yeah. or put it in the chat, but uh, who feels like uh, something different now after doing those three exercises, if you were Oh my to... goodness, I can, I was texting you guys telling you I couldn't like put my back against the wall mm -hmm. at first or my feet without being, being in pain, but I can do it now. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> that's crazy. That's great. Wow. Yeah. And being able to stand up flat against the wall is a huge quote unquote wow. functional test to actually test your body to see, can it be like that guy in the picture? When you use the wall on the floor as your template, your shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and spine all have to be in alignment with each other. So if you can't stand up against the wall straight or lay on the ground flat without pain, it's a huge signal 
that, hey, muscles are out of balance and things have got to shift. So that's amazing. Awesome. That's awesome. really amazing. Anybody else? people nobody's feeling anything <laughs> also do the we only we kind of went through them quick but you can do multiple sets so uh and do it like a super set meaning you do the one set of each exercise so do you know the pillow squeezes then the one where you cross your leg over and then you do the frog with your knees out and you go back and do it again and just kind of cycle through them a couple times you might need a few rep a few sets to if your pelvis is really out of whack, it might take a few times to, to make a big change, but. Um. Yeah, and if, um, here's another kind of pro tip that we teach. Um, so if the whole pelvic girdle thing was like, I'm not sure, I don't know, right? Well, one of the other ways to assess your posture is again, standing up against the wall, can you or can't you do it? How uncomfortable or comfortable is it? And how much, um, you know, if you take your shoes off and you feel into the bottom of your feet into the floor, how balanced do they feel? Do you feel heavier in one foot versus the other? Do you feel more weight in the toes versus the heels? Do you feel more weight on the inside edge of the foot versus the outside edge of the foot? That's a good way to assess your posture overall standing before and after you do your exercises, okay? Um, and I wanted to address something in the chat too, because someone said, oh, well, it feels good, but I still have X pain, right? Or X symptom. Well, that's okay, because this is the first time you have, maybe the first time, um, that you have done posture corrective exercises. So you're going to get a certain percentage of, you know, relief and posture realignment every time you do it. It builds on itself consecutively the more you do it. Day one builds on two and three and four, right? As you're building that new habit and putting that new song up on the piano bench, right? So listen to your body um, and just Try doing these for a good solid week. Um, one time a day is great. If you feel like you need them two or three times a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, that's great too. Um, find out what your body needs and how it needs it. It begins to start that dialogue of understanding and knowing what it needs and beginning to treat, diagnose and treating yourself with exercises. Uh, yeah, and I wanted to, so mention these exercises once again were just generic we had to pick something that was probably helpful for a lot of people but it's obviously not going to help everyone because we all have different postures and different bodies and different symptoms right so um that's really where where we come in is uh what our job is is to help you understand exactly what's going on with your body um and then to teach you the things that you need to do specifically because not no two people that come in the clinic even if they have the same symptom are gonna do the same exercises because it's just, we're treating the posture, right? So um, just wanted to point that out. But um, uh, I know we are at the top of the hour now and we need to wrap it up, but I just wanted to talk about kind of what your next steps are. And after this webinar, you've learned some things and maybe, um, maybe you're still skeptical if you're, if you're brand new to this and you're like, eh, I'm not really sure if I, believe in the, all, what they're saying and it does, doesn't really make sense or maybe you just have questions um that's totally fine and it's good to to you know do your research and i think the best place to get some good answers or is to read uh, pain free so that's one of the several egoski books but if you had to pick one i'd go start with pain free uh, you can get that on amazon or your library or from one of the clinics um and uh read the first few chapters and Pete, the founder, will talk about how, how this all works and, and why. Um, and then there's a chapter in each, uh, for each body part. So you can go to the back chapter or you can go to the neck chapter or the foot, whatever pain you have and try some exercises for that. Um, is the book translated in French? I'm not sure, it might be actually. I know it's translated in a few languages. I'm not sure about French. Um, no, I don't know either. I know it's in Spanish, um, Japanese. Um, I don't know about French. Um, so then the, another option is if you'd like to, uh, maybe this is making sense to you, you'd like to learn a little bit more, um, you can get a free posture evaluation. So from one of us, um, we're doing, we're offering uh, a limited number of free posture evaluations. So what that means is 
we'll take your pictures, or if you're doing it on Zoom like this, you can take your own pictures and email them to us. Um, and we can put lines on there just like we did for the photos earlier and help you see exactly where your body is off and, and then talk about how that's related to what you're dealing with. And, and then we can talk about, you know, what you want to do about it. So that usually takes 20 or 30 minutes and it doesn't cost you anything. You'll learn a little bit more about your body and, and hopefully it'd be the first step to you getting out of pain. And then of course the, um, final option is if you're ready to really make a, a difference um, in your body and you're ready to get started and you want to work with someone one-on-one -on -one to uh, you know go through this process of retraining your posture and getting you out of pain um, getting the help you need then schedule uh, an appointment to to get started um, and if you do that within the next week then we're as a thank you for attending today we'll give you 10 percent off our normal prices. So put those here. Our two packages, eight or 16 sessions is how we bundle it. And that's just because uh, for one, it saves you money. Um, the more sessions you bundle together, we give you a cheaper rate, but also that's about how much time it takes for someone who's been in chronic pain to, to really make a difference in their posture and their pain. Um, you know, those follow-up sessions were making sure that you're doing things correctly, which is really important, um, but also changing the exercises as your body changes. What's difficult today is not going to be difficult in a couple of weeks. So it's important that we're changing things and not just doing the same thing over and over for months at a time, because um, you're not going to get very quick results that way. Um, how long is a typical evaluation? Just the posture evaluation alone is, like I said, 20 to 30 minutes um, sessions. If you want to actually go through the exercises, we plan on for your first time about an hour and a half. Uh, follow up sessions are typically an hour and it's all one on one, regardless if you're coming in in person or virtually on Zoom. It's the process is all the same and uh, same results, same process, same cost. So um, and also for some of you that are, these are the new client prices, by the way, but if you're an existing client, maybe you've done Egoski before, you've done sessions with us or uh, either of our clinics, then um, we're still offering you the 10% discount as well. If you need, feel like you need to kind of get a check-in again or get back on the bandwagon if you've fallen off, <laughs> or uh, maybe you have a new issue now that you'd like some help with that's uh, happened since you last saw your therapist. So um, we've got some questions. Do we take insurance? No, um, unless you have a health savings account or flex spending account, we can usually accept that, but otherwise we don't do any insurance. It's all out of pocket. What's the difference between virtual therapy and photo therapy? Uh, photo therapy is just you emailing us pictures. We look at them and maybe, maybe have a conversation with you over the phone or on email and then email you back the recommended exercises based on your posture. So basically you're all, it's all self-directed. You do the exercises on your own. We don't get to see you doing them. We don't get to get your real-time feedback about them. Um, so it's a little less uh, involved on our end and a little more involved on your end. So it's good for people who are, you know, really uh, can self-directed like that. Um, but, and it's also a little bit cheaper since since we're not spending as much time with you. So, and then the virtual therapy is just the same as the in-person therapy. It's just done virtually on Zoom. So same processes coming in person. So I get all the questions. Yeah, let me be clear on that too from my end. Um, so in the Portland office, we really don't do much photo therapy anymore. Um, we strictly do um, virtual therapy online, either FaceTime, um, Skype or Zoom and or in person. Um, if you need to do photo therapy, it's kind of a rare kind of situation. So if you do, uh, make sure you kind of reach out to me and let me know and we can talk about that. But otherwise, I prefer and you get the most out of in person and or virtual in person. Yeah, I agree. I don't do too many. I have a few clients that I work with uh, photo yeah. therapy, but not ideal. It's it's an option if you know as a last resort. But honestly, if you yeah. afford it, I think doing the doing.
doing it virtually or in person in real time, one-on-one -on -one is going to give you the best results. So that's mm -hmm. what I recommend. Um, oh, I wanted to, thanks for sharing your story, Mary. She said she had ruptured discs and surgery didn't work, but then Egoscue, um, she's been doing her exercises since 2018, pain-free. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep getting stuck in direct, direct chats. And so I've put a lot of answers into the chat, but they went to direct chat. I kept flipping back and forth. So <laughs> yes, please call Zach or I um, at your earliest convenience um, or email us. We're going to put up that information here in a second, or if you haven't already seen it as my name on the screen. Um, yes, there's, we had a lot of people today. So I'm expecting a lot of emails, a lot of calls. Um, please feel free to um, stay on if you want and ask some more one-on-one -on -one questions for another maybe five minutes or so. Um, and then um, if you have, you know, a lot of questions, then 